CBS News has obtained government data showing illegal crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border have dramatically declined since uh, December. As of May 21st, Customs and Border Patrol says the daily average of illegal crossings is at 3,700. That's down 54 percent from December's record high average of about 8,000 daily encounters. In a CBS News exclusive, our immigration and politics reporter Camila Montoya Galvez spoke to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas about the latest numbers. There has been a dramatic decrease. In yes, accounts. indeed. Yes, Why? indeed. Uh, because of a number of actions that we have taken, not only strengthening our enforcement, not only attacking the smugglers, but also building lawful pathways that enable people who qualify for relief to reach the United States in a safe, orderly, and legal way. But the executive action, any action that we take, is challenged in the courts, and so its outcome would be uncertain. And therefore, that's another reason why this legislation is so important. And joining us now is CBS News immigration and politics reporter Camila Montoya Galvez. Camila, uh, Secretary Mayorkas briefly talked about why these numbers are low compared to several months ago, but what's really contributing to this drop? Hi, John. Biden administration officials, including Secretary Mayorkas, would like to argue that their policies are driving this massive drop in illegal crossings here at the U.S.-Mexico border. And that may very well be playing a role, John, but it is not the only catalyst behind this massive change here at the border. Just in December, a quarter of a million migrants were crossing into the U.S. illegally on a monthly basis, now it is roughly 100,000 or 120,000 people per month. That is a massive drop. And U.S. officials tell me that another reason behind that change, John, is an aggressive crackdown on migrants by Mexican officials on the other side of this border. Mexican officials over the past few months, John, have been increasing their efforts to deport migrants to southern Mexico near that country's border with Guatemala. And they're also preventing migrants from boarding trains and buses that would take them closer to American soil. Uh, the secretary also mentioned legislation. Um, I, what he's talking about is on Thursday, Senate Republicans blocked the bipartisan border security bill that uh, was a kind of bipartisan bill that was inching along. It, it, didn't make it didn't make it the first time. It's now been blocked again. You asked the secretary about that. Let's listen. Congress, as you know, has not passed any significant reform to the immigration system since the 1990s, before I was born, actually. Why do you think Congress has been unable to deal with an issue that most people agree is broken and dysfunctional? Well, uh, regrettably, with respect to the bipartisan Senate legislation that just failed today, I think President Biden said it quite crisply. Some want the problem for political reasons rather than deliver the solutions that border security and our country's security needs and the American people deserve. So why'd they bring up the vote if they knew they was going to fail, Camilla? Well, John, I think Democrats and the White House, for that matter, recognize that immigration is a very tricky political issue for them. They know that poll after poll is showing that Americans are citing this issue as a top concern. And immigration is also, after all, John, one of President Biden's worst polling issues heading into his reelection campaign. And so the White House and Democrats are trying to go on the political offensive on this issue, trying to accuse Republicans of playing political games on this issue instead of trying to fix it and compromising with Democrats on a deal in Congress. They believe that Republicans just want to use this issue, John, to undermine President Biden's chances of winning re-election. And as you, as you and I have talked about many times before, but it's worth making this line clear again, and, and Secretary Merrick has mentioned it, the difference between what can be done with an executive action, and you've reported that the White House is considering some more of those, but there's only so much a president can do, which even Donald Trump learned. There's also, there's a requirement for legislation. Remind people uh, of what that bright line is. 
That's right, John. The executive branch in many ways is limited on what it can do on immigration because that is an issue that has traditionally been regulated and also guided by congressional action, federal laws. But as you know, Congress has not acted on this issue in any significant way since the 1990s. And so administrations, both Republican and Democrat alike, have had to use their unilateral authority to try to make some incremental changes to the system. But those changes, as you know, John, face legal challenges and often are held up in court. And so this is what Secretary Mayorkas told me, that even if the Biden administration moves ahead with this expected executive order to try to crack down on asylum here at the border, it would likely face legal challenges from Republican-led states and also advocates for migrants from both sides. And that action could very well be struck down in court. Camila Montoya-Galvez in El Paso, Texas. Thank you, Camila.